What up? This is Coach Leibs, and welcome to NFL Training Sessions number three. Uh, this footage is from my week-long trip in Colorado where I was training Juwan Winfrey for the NFLPA All-Star Game. I was out there for seven straight days with him. Um, his agent flew me out there to get some extra work in, do some fine-tuning on his stance and start and route running specifically um, before this game, and I, I think it really paid off. Um, my first day there, when I got there, I spent a, a day watching all of his game film from his senior year at Colorado. Uh, it was a season where he ended up missing about five games with injury, um, played in about seven or eight games, and, and when he was healthy, he played pretty well. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed that he needed work on uh, really was at the line of scrimmage. It was his efficiency off the ball. It was a lot of his stance and start, and it was just a very, he had a lot of wasted movement at the line. So that, that was really the number one thing that I wanted to work on with him, which ended up being a perfect opportunity because of the seven days I was there, he had to save his legs on most of the days. He was working with Landau Performance Training, which is a really well-known NFL draft prep training group in, in Colorado, right outside side Denver. Um, and they wanted him to save his legs on most days. So a lot of days we were limited to just release work um, and, and you know, stance and start work. But that ended up being perfect because, you know, Juwan has great hands. He's a really fluid, natural route runner. The number one thing he needed to work on was at the line of scrimmage and, and so we spent a lot of time paying attention to detail and really just accumulating reps to try and build muscle memory and, and get his stance and start right um so that's what this whole episode is focused on it's going to be highlights from the five days of stance and start work that we did um and, and just to really break down the details and the specifics of what we're looking for in a proper stance and start and then uh, as we progress, we get into a lot of press release details, playing on your insteps, playing low to lower, um, and some different plans to beat different coverages. Every great route starts with a great stance and start, and coming up there with the same routine every single time, exploding off the ball, low to lower with no wasted movement. You know, that's what gets everything rolling on the right foot, and it's important to make sure that, that, that that's not an issue when it counts the most. All right, here we go. Just starting off with stance and start, getting comfortable, getting used to rolling off that front foot, no wasted movement. I'd actually worked with Juwan on stance and start a few weeks earlier, and you can see kind of the progress he's made already. And here I am just talking to him about it and about how I just felt like his pad level was a little low a few weeks ago, and then he was rising up when he was taking off the ball. Uh, I just want his initial body angle to be at that natural 45 degree angle, and you can see here when he runs, he's popping up to that 45 degree angle, but he doesn't need to start so hunched over. Start in a comfortable position, you know, it's got to feel very natural to you where you're able to scan the defense, you're able to see what's in front of you, and you're also in a, in a physical position to explode off the ball efficiently. So this is a little bit better right here. Um, he's going to get more and more explosive as this workout goes on. But the key that I'm looking for is just no wasted movement. You're like here, like kind of shooting up as much as like drive out. Remember that? So right there, I just got him. He was shooting up a little bit. His pads were raising up a little bit. I want him to drive out low to lower. That's better there. Low to lower is the key point to think about. There it is. That's the one. There you go. Low to lower. How does it feel? Good? Just make sure it feels natural to you, regardless of anything I'm saying. Like, if it feels uncomfortable at all. And this is really a great point and an important point. Like, no matter what kind of things I'm trying to coach him on or correct, it's got to feel natural to the receiver. It's the, the receiver is the one who has to line up in this every single day and get into this stance every rep and, and fire off every time. So it better feel natural to him. I'm just looking for no wasted movement. I'm looking for explosion. I'm looking for efficiency. Um, and, then, and then it's on him to make it comfortable. There's, there's the first rep to the last one. You can see how much lower he's getting. Uh, so now we're going to work on is just this first step explosion and, and, and efficiency off the ball. So I'm going to give him three commands. If it's inside leverage, he's going to use two quicks like I just demonstrated uh, to attack inside leverage. If it's outside leverage, he's going to use a one-step stretch right away. Um, and then if I say loose coverage, he's going to fire off the ball. But the key to this is just no wasted movement. It's gaining ground off the ball, attacking the DB vertically. But we really want to eliminate these false steps and eliminate any of these choppy steps that aren't helping us attack the DB and get him on his heels. You don't need that, you know what I'm saying? You can just go right. You can push off a little bit. We don't need to like We'll see it on the other side. Here, here. That's so much better. And here's a great example of the one step stretch and, and what happens to a DB when everything is attacking him vertically. Look at Juwan, gain ground off the ball, violently attack his outside short arm. That's all the room he needs to win inside right there. 
One step stretch, make sure your back foot crosses your front foot, it's violent, and now you're ready to win inside right away. Just a great rep by Jawan. And this was cool to see because this was two weeks after. This is the, the all-star game that we were training for. So after we worked together, this was him at the NFL PA game during practice the day before the game. And you can see him doing a great job and he's efficient off the line. So it was great to see. Uh, the next evolution of this was we added a, a stick here to make sure he's getting wide enough and getting deep enough. That's a great job. He wants to roll off that front foot. There's two quicks right here for, his, for inside leverage. Really good job. Here's Devontae Adams with a great example of that. Two quicks, attack him inside, and then win back outside. One, two. Great job. Gaining ground, attacking the DB vertically. Feet are staggered. Really good job there by Juwan. Outside leverage, no wasted movement, rolling off that front foot, coming forward. That's great. And we got the stick there. He's aiming to, to clear the stick, both with width and depth. Good. And now we just went back to stance and start and I just wanted to get back into a rhythm, doing everything now off the other foot. We had our right foot up that time. Now we're doing everything with our left foot up. Go back to stance and start. Get familiar going exploding low to lower off your off your left foot. Good. Good. And then we'll get into that first step explosion drill after that. Low to lower. Maximizing efficiency. Roll off that front foot. This is pretty good right here. Getting his eyes up right away to see the defense exploding off the very little wasted movement. And now here we go into the command drill. Outside. See him false up. And now, you know, he's just doing it off a different leg. Now it's just getting used to it and building muscle memory, paying attention to those little details to make sure we're doing it right every single time. Outside. Sit it. Still false up. Yep. You can feel it. Probably need a little bit more weight over his front foot Outside. and roll off that front Sit foot a little more. That's it right there. Attacking oh, vertically. Good. Getting Outside. downfield. Put the DB Sit on it. his heels. Attacking vertically. No waste Outside. of movement. Sit it. Heck yes. That's a great rep right there. That's a great rep right there. Inside. Inside. Now gain Sit ground. It. Eat up space. One, two. Yes, sir. Look how much he's gaining ground vertically. Outside. Sit it. Getting the DB on his heels. That's not bad right there. All right. Now here's day two of the stance work. He already looks more comfortable, in my opinion, in his stance. Just looking at him, this is day two, uh, just a day of getting the reps in. Uh, he looks more comfortable in his stance. It looks more natural. He's thinking about it less. So you can see the efficiency, the explosion. Like, in my opinion, this just looks a lot better than it did day one. It looks a lot more natural. And he's exploding off the ball. So really good job. Outside. Sit. Great job. Now we're not using landmarks. I just inside. want this to be a natural feel. Sit. Inside. One, two. Gain ground inside. Really good job. Sure On your inside. insteps. On your insteps, boom, boom. We gotta work on, think about replacing your front foot with your back foot. You're coming up and just like stepping parallel. And think about when you're attacking inside, replace that front foot with your back foot. So, you, so you're coming, you're going here, here. And I want you that back step to replace your front foot. So you're here, here, you get a little more size. So something I'm talking to him about is just if he needs to move the DB further inside, he needs to think about his back foot replacing his front foot so he can get a little bit more horizontal. Uh, if he really does need to get the DB inside. to jump inside more. Sit. Back foot, replace your front foot. That's good. Inside. That's good. Slightly different release. Sit. Good. The one he was doing before was if he's a little looser. Now if he's tighter, further inside. Outside. Let's get a little bit further Sit. inside. Efficiency. There's a little hesitation yeah, step outside. there. But he'll get it. Now we got a corner. Give Sit. it a look. Attack outside. Short arm good. and go. Really so the good. The first two days training with Juwan, that was very simple. It was mostly just starting from ground zero. Let's, let's reconstruct your stance. Um, and it was mostly just stance and start reps. Um, along with some ball drills, which which I'll feature in a later episode. Uh, but the first few days was mostly just takeoffs, and then it was first step efficiency off the ball. Once those things are mastered, then you can progress from there to, to building complete plans and practicing full release moves at the line of scrimmage. Uh, so the footage you're going to see next is a lot of those release moves where we're really focusing on the two core concepts that we're focusing on are playing low to lower. You start in a low athletic stance and you're coming off the ball even lower with a lower pad level, attacking him vertically, eating up space. Um, and, and then playing on your insteps, on the inside part of your foot. That's where the duck walk comes in so much because you create a violent hip shift. And we really want to get used to attacking the DB vertically, getting him on his heels, but playing on our insteps so we're constantly creating a violent hip shift back and forth to keep the DB guessing. This is after our first routes on air session. Uh, now we're kind of moving off from just regular stance and start, and we're trying to focus more on playing on our insteps. He's going to get his stance and start reps in. You can't take this for granted. Get him in every single day, you know, at least five to ten each leg. 
build the muscle memory. We cannot afford for stance and start to be an issue for us late in a big game. So build the muscle memory, get used to being efficient off the ball every time, and don't take these reps for granted. Now we're really focused on is coming off the ball efficiently and playing low to lower on our insteps and, and we'll maximizing our hip shift ability and maximizing that back and forth to kind of get the DB on his heels um, and eat up while we're eating up ground off the ball. Exactly. And because anytime, like, so there's, there's a real good example in the video where Jeremiah comes parallel. So when you see him have to go like this, Right, and then the same rep, you come staggered, you're here, and instead of going out, you're, you're right back no, vertical right away. No, in like, in the routes, yeah, when, at some point when he was giving you that press look. But I talked about it, it was a really good visual for you guys to see how important it is to keep your, your feet staggered and, and pressed. Like, if you're, if you're getting pressed by a corner, as soon as I go like this and you let your feet come parallel, you can't, like, get vertical now. Now you have to, you have to step out like this. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if your feet are here, I can step vertical right away. And get faster. And you'll, you'll see. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see it, you'll see it in the video. It'll be a good visual. Same thing here. You're hopping right at him, Jeremiah, and see how your feet come parallel, and you got to step out and around it. We want to get vertical. We want to shave his shoulder and get vertical. And because your feet are coming together, you have to go out and around. <clears throat> That's not what we want, and that will get you beat against the best corners in the world. This was it right here, Juwan. This was my the greatest rep of the day. Moving your back foot first, eating up space, way better than this hopping stuff. Move your back foot first. You're attacking him vertically, eating up space. That's gonna that's gonna move any DB off his mark when you pair it with hand combat. That's a great rep. It's a little bit better by you, Jeremiah. You're still stepping a little bit out to the side because you're coming parallel. Keep those feet staggered and see how quickly Juwan's getting vertical. Vertical right now. Shaving his shoulder. That's how it's got to look because his feet are staggered. Great finish with the catch. Also, like the pin on the releases, because was it one where I just like got balance on it like that? Yeah. See, some people teach it. I don't like that shit because to me, like, if you were think about this, right? If I was gonna tell you like push this wall, would you push it like this, or would you push it like this? With the, you have way more power with your feet staggered, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're like this, I can push you over. You have no base behind you. Where with your staggered, now when you go hand combat, you have something underneath yourself, you're way more powerful. So this is an important conversation, just talking about keeping your feet staggered versus coming to balance and having them parallel. And exactly what I just talked about, you're just, you're much more powerful when your feet are staggered, you have a powerful base underneath you, and, and, and you're able to get vertical right away and shave the DB's shoulder. When they come parallel, you gotta step out and around, and you also lose all the power. If a DB jacks you up when your feet are parallel, you're gonna fall over. If a DB tries to put his hands on you with your feet staggered, you'll have more of a base to combat that and, and lean into it and not get moved off. Your you're winning inside on a, on anything, and like a curl, post, whatever, but that three quick look, right? So he's, had, he's inside leverage press, but you wanna win inside of him. So, one, two, three, that hard one, and then you rip inside. Oh, wait. So now this is working on winning inside versus inside leverage press, right? Three quicks, one, two, three. Two quicks right to attack his leverage, that's what he's gonna get you to glue to him, and then one hard step outside to get him to jump outside. If you just step outside right away, that's not going, a good one, corner should sit you. inside. One hard outside to get him to jump outside. Exactly what I just said. One, two to get him to glue to you, you've attacked his leverage, he's chasing you, and then one hard step, boom, win inside. Good. Great job. One, two, three. Really good job here. It's a really good rep by one of my former players at Wesleyan. One, two, three. And you can see it's just two quicks aimed right at him. Then the third one is outside his framework. That gets him to jump inside. And now you can slip inside. Here's Leonte Carew, who plays for the Dolphins. This is an epic three quick release against Michigan State for a touchdown. One, two, get him on his heels. Three, to get him to jump outside. And then you can win inside. This is great for like a dig, a post, a curl, anything in breaking. Or in this case, it was a go route versus head up leverage. Um, and and he, Leonte just did a great job, a great plan. One, two quicks to get right at his leverage. Third quick outside, outside his framework to get him to jump outside. Everything's sudden. One, two, three. Here's Juwan at Colorado. One, two, three. And you see that third step is what gets him to bite outside and, and shoot his hands and stop his feet. And now watch this catch. This is a great finish by Juwan. Good rep. This is back when he was healthy. Great That's job. And now, so what I did here was I took that That's third cone better. away because I wanted him to really reach for that third quick. Really extend it outside That's his framework better. and get the DB to commit with that step. Watch Leonte here. See how much, how extended that, one, two, three. It's, an, it's a violent, aggressive step. One, two, three. That's a great That's release a by Jawan better. right there. So I took that cone away so he wasn't shortening his stride at all. And I just wanted him to really open up three and really jab that, get the DB to commit. It's a great job. One, two, three. That one's a little out of control on this time. Like a little out of control, right? 
But that's good because it, it's just from you pushing yourself to, to roll off and attack. Like, it's good. You do, you're getting it. And exactly what I'm telling him. It's, it's good that he's out of control because that means he's trying to push himself. I want him to be aggressive with this. And the more reps he has at it, the more muscle memory he'll build up and the more natural it'll feel. And, and he'll stop tripping all over himself. But continue to push yourself to go hard and, and play a game speed. What was that one? That one was four clicks. Yeah, four. Right. But so if you went four, you'd went outside. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm saying? Just as long as you're thinking about it. So, like, you did exactly one, two, three, four. That's a great way to, that's a great compliment to win back outside. Just understand that an even number you're going to win outside, an odd number you'll win inside. An odd number you'll win inside, one, two, three, win back inside. Mental reps are important, these reps are important so that you're not, the amount that you're thinking now can't happen in a game. You know, that's why this is so important to get all these reps in. An even number now means you're going to be pushing off your inside step to win outside. One, two, three, win back inside. One, two, three, exactly. get inside right exactly. away. Very good job. Just continue to get the reps at it. You can see Juwan walking through it. Now this is one where I want you to walk off the ball. I want you to run off the ball, get on his toes, and then use your insteps. Eat up space first, and then use your insteps. You see him extending those first two steps a little more, kind of running off the ball like this. Watch out, this receiver, he's going he's gonna to eat, gain ground first, eat up space, get on his toes, and now get on your insteps, and that's how you're going to win. Make sure you're eating up space first. Run off the ball first. Close the space, and now on your yes, end steps. Not yes, bad. Yes, That's a really good exactly. rep. It's all right. I don't mind him tripping over himself. Keep pushing yourself to go game speed. One, two. There it is. That's a good rep right there. Gain ground, mm -hmm. low to lower on your end steps. This is where the mm -hmm. duck walk comes in. Mm -hmm. And those first two can be like patient. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it can be a little slower and that last one is violent. Like that, that's a kind of like change of speed shit that I, I don't think you've added to your game yet. It's really gonna help. Come off the ball patiently, assess the DB's reaction, and then you're violent and mm -hmm. sudden on your insteps. That's a great mm -hmm. job. And just mess with different rhythms and different tempos mm -hmm. to keep the DB on his heels. And then, right, you do that to win inside on a curl, same type of corner, but now you want to win outside, you come up and then it's just boom, boom, and then you go right back out. So if the ball's start, the ball's in there, it's so like boom, boom, boom. Redirect, it's four quick. Just like I was saying, now four quicks to win back outside. One, two, three, four. Now you're winning back outside. One, two, three will get you inside, then it's, you eat up space, and it's one, two, three, four, and you can win back outside. And you can see how much pride Juwan's taking in the details and making sure he's got his mind right. Making sure he's really paying attention to all this. One, two, three, mm -hmm. four. There mm -hmm. it is. There it is. And you just can't take these reps for granted. Becoming a great receiver, so much of it is just having all these movements become mu yes. muscle memory and become second nature so you're not thinking about them on game day. And that, this looks exactly like this rep here, which is a great release. Attacking short arm, getting on his toes, patient but sudden. Yes, sir. Just keep getting reps at it. Eat up space, low to lower, on your insteps. Watch his pad level sinking lower. Everything's violent. Everything's aggressive. So a good example of Des Bryant now kind of changing the tempo on this kid, right? Get on his toes, change the tempo, assess his reaction. And that's what I want you to work on. Yes. Good yes, change of speed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And just continue yes. to mess with different tempos. You yes. got a lot of time on some of these routes of the line of scrimmage, red zone fades. You know, go balls in general. Take your time, mess hmm. with tempos, and make this release stuff your own. Hmm. Press releases is one of the hardest aspects of wide receiver play to to coach. Um, and, it, and it's what makes me most uncomfortable as a coach because I can't tell the receiver exactly what's going to happen in front of him. And, you know, if I'm teaching a hitch route or a curl route, there's certain footwork to that that should look the same every single time. And we can practice the same break point that's going to be executed the same way every time over and over and over. Um, but with press releases, like there's no way for me to know how the defense is going to play you. There's no way for me to predict how the defender is going to react. So I have to give you a toolbox of rules and, and you know, kind of release steps that you can implement in your game. But now it's up to you as the receiver to, to add those to your game at the appropriate time. I give you kind of the framework to build your plan around. But now it's up to you to, to a plan. The, now it's up to you to apply those concepts and take some of those and take some of those release moves that we've practiced and apply them at the right time. Um, so, so I do a lot of this kind of stuff with my receivers where it's just, you know, taking time to practice different plans at the line of scrimmage. Visualize a defender in front of you and work on three or four different plans for how you think you would win. Um, but but they have the, the receivers have to have a lot of freedom to operate. And again, like I, I live by concepts, right? So always eat up space and get on the defender's toes. Always attack as leverage first. Always attack short arm if you want to move, if, 
Always attack short arm if you have to move the defender. Um, there's certain things like that. Always keep your feet staggered. Uh, always play on your insteps. Like there's certain rules like that that should exist in every single release. Um, and then how they execute them, how many steps they take, you know, the change of speed they, they, they use, that's up to the receiver to, to have some freedom with that and make it his own. Jimmy's releases might look different than Johnny's, but as long as those core concepts are true in both of them, as long as they're attacking leverage or eating up space, you know, things like that, then generally they're going to find success and you give them the, the freedom to, to figure out their own way of, of how to navigate the press release game. Um, and I think it's going to look different for a lot of players. So Jawan, you know, working with Jawan on press releases is going to be different than working with another player of his caliber on press releases. But as long as they understand the concepts to live by, they can then practice the movements, practice playing low to lower, practice playing on their insteps and, and make that fit to their game and make it work for, for each individual. So that's it. That's all we've got for episode three of NFL training sessions. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the next episode that's going to come out is going to feature the full routes on air and wide receiver workout that I did with Jawan and the entire draft class uh, for Landau Performance. It was a really good group of kids, really talented group of kids. And I'll show you guys kind of the wide receiver individual drills we did and then the routes on air session with some NFL quarterbacks. So that's going to be a really good episode and, and cover a lot of different aspects of wide receiver play. Um, after that, I'm going to produce a similar episode. Um, that's going to focus on the ball drills and the catching drills that we did that coincided with the stance and start work. Uh, like I mentioned, a lot of our days were limited to stance and start and ball drills. Uh, I just showed you the stance and start portion of, of the work we did. Now I'm going to really show you the, the catching drills and the progression that we did to, to build up really great eye discipline and, and, and work on a lot of finger strength and hand strength um, to improve your hands overall. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Coach Leaves. I will see you guys soon. Everybody.